Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. There are two builds on the screen today and we are doing both of them. Today we're doing a deep dive into the manufactured trailer mobile prefabricated home. Whatever you call it, whatever the regional nickname is, the style is very, very common, easy to make for a starter or expand. Overall, it's a great little house to have in your tool belt. Shout out to Juicebox for the suggestion, by the way. I felt like we needed a base game beginner friendly build and this fits both of those criteria perfectly. Another American classic, the main defining factor of this home style is that it is manufactured off-site and transported to the property. Specifically, manufactured homes have been built since June 15, 1976, as that is when the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development provided strict guidelines for the manufacturing of homes in a factory setting, and homes created before that would then technically be called mobile homes. Of course you want to know the guidelines. The homes must be at least 320 square feet or 45 tiles in game and have a permanent base frame. This frame generally includes wheels until the home is delivered and placed on a foundation of a pier, not the water kind, crawl space, or slab. Being able to manufacture off-site can actually lead to up to 35% lower cost per square foot than traditionally constructed homes in the same area, but that doesn't really apply to our game. Modular homes are also manufactured off-site, but are shipped and assembled in sections and aren't constructed with the same guidelines, making them a completely different style for a later video. A standard manufactured home will generally be 14 to 18 feet or 5 to 7 tiles wide and 66 to 80 feet or 25 to 30 tiles deep, but smaller homes are also popular. However, we all know double, triple, quadruple, and even quintuple manufactured homes exist. These are manufactured units of the standard size, shipped out and arranged to have the assembling team on site bring them all together to be one home. Usually this space allows for larger kitchens and more bedrooms and doesn't necessarily mean two to five copy and paste trailers all lined up, although that's definitely an option as well, depending on when the units were bought, whether they were collected over time, and whose grandpa is overseeing connecting the units. Traditionally, ceilings are quite low, maxing out at about 8 feet, but depending on the state shipping regulations and the depth of your pockets, you can get them higher. These same factors play into windows, wall coverings, flooring, foundations, basements or not, decks, where the front door is, and so much more. The additions of decks, porches, awnings, garages, and even small additions can all help this otherwise very humble home look borderline fancy, or you can stick with a nice little rectangle. I love how many ways this home can be reshaped and reconfigured to suit the needs of the family, but this has been enough talking, let's get building. I am building on a 20 by 30 today. Let's start with just a single wide. Of course, this can be larger or smaller, but in general, you're going to look at something that's five to seven or eight tiles wide and 20 to 30 tiles deep. So on this 20 by 30 lot, I should pretty comfortably be able to get a six tile wide home and I don't want it to go all the way to the back of the lot and I don't want it all the way to the side. So I'm going to do about like this. And there's my base rectangle. Now you do want to use short wall heights because for transportation reasons, um, short walls are going to ship better, bridges and all that jazz, but you should have a rectangle now. The two like main layout types is pretty much you can have one bedroom at either end. That does give you a couple of fairly large bedrooms, which is really nice. But I think I'm going to put both my bedrooms on one side because then I can put a bathroom right between them. Then I have a nice big main bedroom a bathroom and a smaller bedroom for kids or an office space or whatever. Now for this space, I do want some sort of visual divide to split it up. Um, this is both for structural reasons and just because I want to. So I'm going to add a little bit of a wall here. This would help support the roof. So this will let me have a little L-shaped kitchen here, a nice spot for dining, and then a nice big living area as well. And then pretty much you take the same thing and you make it bigger or smaller, more bedrooms or not, and it's a mobile home. I'll get into double and triple wides and all that stuff in a hot second, but first let's go ahead and finish this one up. Now the roof is the easiest thing since the shotgun. I actually had a few comments on some of my shotgun home videos asking about whether or not the shotgun and the trailer home are the same style. They are not, but I can see why the overlap um, appears to be there because they're both long low rectangles for the most part. However, trailer homes pretty much aren't two levels. I know that you can do some small additions though. Uh, one super popular one is to add sort of like a bay window to the front like this. It just adds a little bit of interest and dimension. Very nice. And of course, if you want to follow along with that, you just grab a little octagon and pitch it down. Ta-da! Next up, we can talk about foundations. Depending on where you live, that's going to determine the kind of foundation that these homes are on. They are all across the US, actually all across the world at this point. Um, so like in my area, they're all on brick or stone foundations. Some of them have basements, although most don't. I live in a fairly wet area, but we also do have all four seasons. Um, some wet areas that only have two or three seasons, you may see them up on stilts like this to accommodate for hurricanes and flooding. And in warm, dry areas, you may see them on a very low concrete foundation or none whatsoever. So if you're wondering what foundation 
look at the homes around you. Uh, in this particular world, we can see that there are foundations. Or if you're trying to build in a specific area of the states, specifically where you live, just take a look outside. Do you have foundations or not? I do. And I am going to go with brick because I am going to end up with bricks in my wallpaper. But first, let's talk about doors. Could be at the front or the side. Another difference to the shotgun where the door is always at the front. And wherever the door is, you're most likely going to at least start with a small deck, although many people expand those and even add sunrooms. So looking at my floor plan, if I sort of want the door to enter in between the kitchen and the living area, I can put it right there. However, the doors, windows, and wallpaper can really sort of bring this either trailer park or high class living situation, right? Because this and this are obviously both mobile homes, but they have very different vibes. They don't tend to be heavily windowed though, unless they're on the like higher class end. So this is probably about the max number of windows. At the very least, you'll have windows all down one side. Generally, you'll have a couple on the opposite side of the majority of your windows, and you may have some at the front and back as well, uh, but it kind of depends on where the home is placed. If this is facing directly into the neighbors, uh, perhaps you wouldn't have windows here or on the neighbor's house uh, for privacy reasons, right? But if you're in the middle of nowhere, it doesn't matter so much. Now in general, I do like to have my windows aligned with the top of my door. However, these are looking a little low. So either I can press F5 and then get quarter tile placement or I can just scooch them up and have them a bit taller than my door. Or I can try and find a taller door that I still like. Like this one's a little bit taller. And it leaves plenty of room for a trash can. Perfect. So now I can just go through and make sure my windows are actually where I want them. Now in general, these bedrooms would have closets. However, that really doesn't matter in The Sims, especially if you're building with the base game. So I'm going to opt for some additional windows instead. And then I went with a siding and brick combination. This is pretty much what you see on homes like this in my area. So I figured, hey, why not run with it? Now moving inside, flooring and wallpaper and furniture and doors and all that stuff is once again, pretty much up to you. I'm going to be placing a door here, here, and here. Now this bathroom is plenty big to add a laundry, but if you actually wanted a separate laundry, that would most commonly be directly across from the bathroom kind of like this. And then you'd find a washer and dryer unit, something like that. But of course, we're sticking with the base game today. Now, if I scooch that window up a little bit, I could go with a tub shower combo like this. We could do just a shower and then a sink and toilet and all that stuff. Just a tub, so many options. I don't mind being ambiguous when I build, but sometimes it is kind of funny just how much it doesn't matter because what you put in here is going to directly reflect pretty much what tax bracket your sims are in. But a bathroom can really say a lot in that regard. So this is the layout I'm gonna go with here. Bedrooms, I think you're good on, but let's talk about this little kitchen over here. This is actually a pretty nice big kitchen. I am just going to stick with these super basic cabinets though, but I'm going to use an end piece here just to give it a nice, um, clean finish. Then the rest of the kitchen we can fill up pretty easily. I am going to do some upper cabinets. I like to take these end pieces, um, even if they're sort of against the wall like this, just to break it up a bit. And then we'll do a normal cabinet in the middle and some shorter ones over the sink and stove. So then I can have a little range hood and I could put a small window here as well if I wanted to. Now the windows being all matchy matchy on these homes isn't nearly as important as it may be in other home styles. Um, they're very utilitarian in that regard. Speaking of utilitarian, why not add a dishwasher and a coffee machine? I feel like that's suitable and a trash can. And then from here, you can pick whatever floor and wallpaper and whatever you like. Linoleum or fake stone in the kitchen, pretty common. You could do it in the whole area if you wanted to, especially since this is sort of also an entry point, in which case I think I'll do a little control F to get that nice diagonal line there. And for the rest of it, I'm just going to use some boards. I lied, I'm also putting linoleum in the bathroom. Now often in this general area of the build with this back hall, you'll actually have a secondary entrance exit sort of point, which will of course come with its own tiny little deck for stairs. I do like adding these because it's a great connecting point for a fence, right? Something like this. So I could actually have a fenced in yard area, right? Like that for a dog or kids or whatever, and then still have this area open. 
Speaking of, inside is pretty much done, although I suppose I should add some wallpaper. And now we can talk about finishing up the exterior. I know this is moving pretty quickly, but we are going to build a whole new home on a different lot in just a couple of minutes, so we'll talk about finishing up the outside here. Now whether or not you have any fenced in area on your yard is going to depend on what size lot you're building on, neighborhood, all that stuff. But most homes will have somewhere to park. I know Sims can't drive, but still, for the realism, uh, we can grab the slab of concrete or the sidewalk slabs to add a little parking area. Now if you put a carport over this or not, totally up to you. Uh, depending on where you are, you may see this whole area sort of done up in concrete, right? Kind of like this for parking, barbecue, all that stuff, or just a small part for parking a car. Landscaping in this sort of size lot would be pretty minimal. Uh, you're mostly going to be looking at a few small flower beds along the foundation um, and maybe a couple of large shade trees. A nice big tree, some plants, right? And then of course terrain paint everywhere. Just a nice little soft brush, put it under your plants, under the edges of your path, and of course under your foundation. I think that's about it for our time here, so I'm going to throw this one up on the gallery for you guys if you'd like to take a closer look, but let's jump over to a larger lot. So when you're looking to expand or just build a larger mobile home, typically what you're going to see is a whole bunch of identically sized pieces, sort of, each with their own unique floor plan that will all fit together. Now some of these home sections may be narrower um, than if you're doing a whole home. For example, we could do a few five wide sections. And here are sort of the rules that I saw when I was looking at floor plans and stuff, is you might get a room that goes up to the wall, or you might have a room that sort of connects between, right? So it's just open like this, but you're not generally going to have a room that extends partially into the next the next section. Of course, this is a Sims 4, you do you, but if you're looking for that classic like double wide, triple wide, the space makes sense, but it kind of doesn't feel, um, at least that's the feeling I get when I'm in them, that's kind of what it is, I think, is just how these homes have to be manufactured to ship it means that you're not going to have a section that just looks like this with like one partial room with like one wall removed, that wall was supposed to stay, like you're not going to see a whole lot of sections that look like that, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, no worries. Like I said, you can do what you want. One thing this does allow for though is really nice big rooms. Uh, for example, we could do a nice big main bedroom here with a whole bath and walk-in closet. Like that's nice, right? And then maybe we do another big bedroom here. We'll do a little hall to a secondary door, right? And then like another three bedrooms there. Very nice. But then over here, if we do a bedroom and then like a nice big family bath, this wall we're not actually going to remove. This wall we are going to place a spandrel. Because think about it, would you really want this much space of a home that's manufactured in a factory just to be open, no supports with a roof? I don't think so. So you're going to be adding spandrels for that. But you can see how even though we have a whole bunch of rooms and even some open spaces, we don't really have anywhere. I forgot that was a hallway. Um, we don't really have anywhere where the rooms extend into the next section. The rooms are all in their own section. Um, or it's like completely open. Still not 100% sure that that makes sense. Another thing that I did notice though in some of them was that you may actually find narrow halls like this as if the room has to be pushed back a little bit from that structural wall, right? And then this would like be a living room, but then you have a small hallway here for a bedroom and bathroom. I'm not gonna bother with that though. I'm just gonna add some doors and make sure that the floor plan makes sense. So now we have plenty of room to figure out kitchen, dining, living spaces, all of that. Now I'd like a nice big kitchen, so I'm going to take advantage of this space. And this gives me plenty of room to add an island or a table in the middle here as well. Right, so now we've got our kitchen, plenty of space for dining, and then there are a lot of doors opening up into here. But again, if we wanted to scooch these back a bit, perhaps we could. Uh, we would just want to make sure that we were still maintaining some sort of structural integrity. Right, so if we scooch back a little bit, maybe we add a spandrel. Now this could mess with lighting, so definitely use the spandrels carefully because they will sort of dictate a room as a separate room. Of course they will. Uh, if you use spandrels, they read as a wall in the game, so it will make a room be a separate room if it's separated by a spandrel. That's what I was trying to say. But this is what I was trying to get at. Nice big sort of family living space there. Lots of big open spaces in between the rooms as well. I found that that was pretty common with the floor plans I was looking at, and as always, all of the floor plans, references, all that jazz are all linked in the Pinterest board down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like. You've made it this far in the video, so you must be enjoying it okay. And that just lets YouTube know that like, hey, this is a good video. Other people should watch this too. So now this one is not going on the gallery because something that you may see fairly frequently would actually be a single wide and a double wide joined together by a very large porch. 
Um, this would be like a multi-generational sort of family thing, right? So let's say we follow the same construction methods. We've got our single wide over here. We've got a double wide over here following the same rules as with the triple, just a little bit smaller. Um, and then we want to join them with a deck, which is just going to be a nice flat square. Now we can raise them all up onto that foundation, add a couple of roof pieces, and even, I've seen this on a lot of the floor plans as well, sort of connect the houses with a sunroom area. This would probably have a roof as well. And of course, if you don't like these little eaves clipping in, this is how you would fix that. First, you're going to bring the roof in and you're going to bring the eaves in as well. So it should line up about like that. Now what you can do is grab a second piece and you'll actually extend this roof piece so that it lines up with the corner like this. But when you bring the eaves in, they hide. So you should be looking something like that. And then you've got a nice little roofed portion for a sunroom. From here, we just have to make it look pretty. Now I'm doing a couple of things to make these look like they were sort of all placed here intentionally. First, I used a six tile base width for this home and then doubled that to make a 12, twi 12 tile uh, double wide over here. And then this is also six tiles. So that makes everything look much more planned. I'll also use the same wallpaper for everything, the same doors, which I'm going to use a sliding door since this is um, sort of a communal deck area. And of course into the sunroom, which will add a whole bunch of windows too. This was a weekend project, so I'm not worried about these windows matching, but I'll match the rest of them. Not only is this not an uncommon layout for my area, um, I swear I've driven by this house going north a dozen times forgot to paint these walls. Now whether you decide to bust down and add a door into this room or not, uh, like I said the interior kind of depends on whose grandpa's running this project. If it was my grandpa, we would have doors. Now these homes would most likely still have those little side entrances as well. So once again I'm going to add a little bit of a fenced in area for, you know, a dog or whatever. Small children. And I just realized I think I could actually fit a whole like, yeah, I could get a whole playground back here. Sick. Aside from whatever you need for kids, pets, and the otherly, a larger home like this would be out further in the country, so you'll probably see a larger yard and therefore more space for more trees, which again, resizing with the bracket keys is fantastic for just bringing in a little bit of variety without having to use too many plants or a little flower bed. And if you're trying to go for American suburban, you're going to start with some sort of bushes kind of up close to the foundation of the house. I don't know why, but that's the way that it is. Those are the rules. And then from there, you're going to grab a couple of large shrubbish flowers, usually hydrangeas. Those are super popular. And you can place a handful of those. I always recommend going with an overall odd number and once again, using those bracket keys to resize to get a little bit of variety in that landscaping. You can throw in a couple of rocks as well if you're feeling so inclined. And I am holding alt to get more exact placement, but I have not turned move objects on yet for this build, so I'm not going to do it now as much as it may tempt me. After that, you can go in with a soft dirt terrain brush to sort of paint under where all your plants are. And I like laying dirt down where I want my path as well. And then from here, if it's not interesting enough yet, you can grab a few other flowers, probably something a little bit lower to the ground or even just straight up on the ground. Flamingos are a good touch. If you can find where they fit, there we go. Or like a bird bath. Finally, for the path, I'll go back over with some gravel with a little bit less soft of a brush, but I like putting the dirt down first because I feel like it blends more nicely that way. And of course, go back with that terrain paint to go under any of your structures, including the foundation and your playground or whatever else you may have added to the yard. I like to add a little bit of extra dirt around here. And of course, if you go too far, you can always grab the eraser tool uh, just because, you know, kids plus grass equals mud. Hopefully this answered some of your burning questions about the manufactured homes in America. As always, feel free to leave your questions suggestions and corrections in the comments down below. Both of these homes will be on the gallery. Details are in the video description, but that's it for today. So don't forget to check out the cards here on the screen. Thank you so much for building with me today, and I look forward to building with you again very, very soon. Bye.